This is going to be chapter one, functions and function notation. And in this chapter, we're going to start talking about uh, functions all around, uh, looking at different types of functions and being able to graph them as well. So um, 1.1 is going to be functions, just in general, everything about functions. And we've kind of, uh, maybe you might have seen functions in previous classes. Um, so let's just start off with a general definition. So basically a function just um, assigns each element x uh, and we're going to call this element x the domain to exactly one element in y and we're going to call this the range okay so that's basically what the function is so uh, uh, for each element x you only have exactly only one y um, and when we talk about functions uh, something that you might have uh, seen is that the y value is basically um, f of x so it's just a fancy way that mathematicians write y we if we know that something is a function if i know that uh, every x value has exactly one y value then we can just kind of uh, write instead of writing y we write f of x so if we know uh, like for example y equals x plus 2 this guy's a function um, because we know that it is just a function we can replace the y with f of x so these two things or these two statements are just equivalent okay so um that's just a fancy way to do it um so think about the function as well that it just depends on another variable so um if i have an input x and i put it into the function okay so i put it here into the function f of x what i'm going to output is a y okay so this is going to be like an input and then an output so it's kind of like imagine that you if you press a button on a on a printer, right, what you should output is just one particular thing, right? So uh, if you press print, you're hoping that the computer is gonna print it. You don't want it to do another, out, another output, okay? So so just a little bit of, of function. So, um, and you maybe have seen them a lot in trig or in previous algebra courses. So there's many different ways that we can write functions. So first we'll start off with a set notation, okay? So let's say you have a set uh, like A and B, and you have a certain set of numbers. So basically, let's say here you have this machine and maybe it has uh, four different numbers, a one, two, three, or four. And when I press a button, you're gonna get a certain output. So you have a four, you have a five, and you have a six, okay? So if I press a one, you're go it's gonna go to four. If I press two, it's gonna go to five. Let's say if I press three, it's also gonna go to five. And if I press four, it's gonna go to six, okay? So the question here is, is this a function? Okay, so is this relationship a function? So we gotta think about the definition of a function. So it says that for every element x, there's only one y element so you should also so when i press one the x button i should only go for one thing so let's look at number one if you look at number one you kind of see that it's only going to one particular thing it's only going to four so that's good if i press two it's only going to go to five okay it doesn't go to another thing so that's good if i press three it's only going to go to 5, okay? And if I press 4, it's only going to go to 6. So you can see that these are all the inputs. You're only going to get one output. Now, I know that you have a 2 and a 3 here that go to 5, but the rule says that you only need every x value should only go to one y value, okay? So is this a function? Yes, this is a function, okay? So let's say we had this other relationship. So let's say you had a one, a three, and a four, a zero, a three, and a two. So let's say I press one, that went to two. I press three, that went to th zero and three. And then I press four and I go to two. So is this a function? Well, in this case, Let's check it out. So if I click on four, I'm gonna get a two. 
Okay, so that's good. It doesn't go anywhere. If I press three, it's doing two different things. It's going to zero and it's going to three. So this is not a function because three has more than one output. It has two of them. So this is not a function. Okay, so this is just um, how you can kind of look at functions and you can kind of think about like if I press print, it's probably if I press the button print, it's printing, but at the same time, it's also doing something else. So you don't really know what exactly you're going to get and you only want it to do just one operation. Okay. Now, another way that you can think about functions, you can think about them algebraically. So how do we describe functions algebraically? And this is kind of how you've uh, probably seen them in previous math classes. So uh, you've seen functions that kind of look like this, f of x is equal to x plus 2, or g of x is equal to, I don't know, 3x squared plus x plus 1, something like that. So this is kind of how you've seen functions. So one of the things that we want to be able to do is we want to um, be able to evaluate these functions. So let me give you an example. So let's say we want to evaluate the function. So let's say I want to figure out what f of 0 is. Uh, what is f of 1? What is, oops, what is g of 3? And then what is g of a? And then tell me what g of a plus h is. Okay, so if you want to uh, take a moment and pause the video, you can try to try these out. If not, you can just follow along with me. So uh, the, let's do the first one. So basically what this means, f of 0, is that I'm literally plugging in the 0 into the x. So I'm going to plug in 0 into the f of x. So I'm going to have 0 plus 2. That's just going to give me 2. So whenever you see f of 0, this is just telling you what is the function when I put in 0. So when I plug in 0, you're going to have 0 plus 2. That's going to give me 2. So f of 0 is basically the y value. Okay. So now what is going to be f of 1? So now I'm going to plug in 1 into the x. So you're going to have 1 plus 2. That's going to give me 3. So that's what that function is. Okay. Now let's figure out what g of 3 is. So g of 3 is now we're going to use this g of x thing. Okay. And we're going to plug in 3. Okay. So we're going to have 3. And then we're going to put 3 inside. Plus 3 plus 1. Okay. Okay. So 3 squared is going to be give me 9, and then 9 times 3 is going to give me 27, plus 3, plus 1. And this is going to give me 31. All right, now a. That means in this case, in the function, I'm going to plug in the value of a, or just whatever a may be. So this is just going to be 3a squared plus a plus 1. That's basically all it is. So I'm just plugging in this a into the x and that's what I get. Okay, now g of a plus h. So that means that I'm going to plug in a plus h wherever I see an x. So right now I have this 3. I'm going to put this in parentheses. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to put parentheses. And what am I going to plug in there? So what I'm going to plug in is this a plus h. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify. So remember that this guy just means that I'm going to FOIL this. So do not distribute that. That's not, that's not correct because it's a plus there. So instead what you're going to do is 3a plus h times a plus h because that means that there's two of these. Then you have this a plus h over here. And then you have a 1. So let's FOIL this out. So you're going to get 3a squared. Then you're going to have an ah. Then plus ah plus h squared, plus a, plus h, plus 1. So I can combine these two guys. So you have 3a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, then plus a, plus h, plus 1. Then I can distribute the 3 out. So I'm going to have 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared. Then you're going to have another a, then another h, then a 1. And it doesn't seem like I can combine anything, so this is going to be the final answer. Okay? Okay. So, um, so yeah. So these are just not that bad. You just got to make sure that you plug them in 
um, and then you'll just get your, your answers. Now, just like we have these types of functions, uh, we can plug in values into the functions, we can actually solve for them as well. So let's say, for example, I have this other problem. So let's say we had um, given um, h of p is equal to p squared plus 2p uh, solve for h of p equals 3, okay? So I have a function that's p squared plus 2p. We know that this is a function because we rewrote it as a h of whatever. Um, and then now I want to solve for the value of p. So what value of p will give me an output of 3? So this guy right here is actually the output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 3 in here in this entire thing. Okay. So this thing is going to be a 3. And what is this equal to? Well, that equals to the right-hand side, which is just p squared plus 2p. Okay. And now what you see is that this is just a quadratic. Um, so one thing that you, when the way that you solve quadratics is you can subtract them. You, and you have 0, p squared plus 2p minus 3. Okay. And then here you can just factor this thing out. So you have a p here and a p here. If you, uh, if you factor this, it's going to be a 3 and a 1. And then this is going to be a plus and a minus. Okay. Um, so then you're just going to break it up into two different things. So p plus 3 equals 0. p minus 1 equals 0. So here p is equal to negative 3. And p is equal to 1. So basically you have two, two values of p that correspond with the output 3. Um, so if you feel really iffy about the quadratics, there's going to be a chapter that we're going to do after our first exam uh, that is all about quadratics. So you'll be able to review a lot of the quadratics. So, but do make sure that you know how to factor, though. The factoring you should kind of feel a little comfortable with. Okay. All right. So um, and then let's do another problem just like this one. So what about if you I give you a g of x equals square root? of x minus 4, I want to solve for g of x equals 2, okay? So basically what this means is that I'm going to plug in g of x equals 2 in here. You're going to have 2 is equal to the square root of x minus 4. So i got to solve for x. So what I'm going to do to get rid of that square root, I'm going to square both sides. And what you're going to get is 4 is equal to x minus 4. And I'm going to solve for x. So add 4 to both sides. And you're just going to get that x is equal to 8. So this value of x is the thing that makes this function um, equal to 2. Okay? All right. So uh, we're going to uh, wrap this up with uh, piecewise defined functions. Okay? And then we'll talk about graphically. Um, uh, how do we define them graphically? So we'll just start with the piecewise defined function. Okay, so not all functions are are um, created equally, I guess. So usually in engineering and in physics, you're going to see a lot of piecewise functions because um, usually if we're looking at trends, they all not follow the same trend. Sometimes something may be going very linearly, something may be a little bit more quadratically, maybe something looks like a sine function, I don't know. So it looks a little bit uh, different. So maybe it might be a combination of multiple functions. So basically piecewise functions is basically what it is. So all of the functions themselves are broken up in pieces, okay? So an example of that would be like f of x is equal to, then we're gonna draw like a little curly brace, three, four x minus seven, and then x squared minus 4. So you have a function that's composed of three different functions. So where are these defined? So here x is less than 3. x here is between 3 inclusive and 7. And then x here is greater than or equal to 7. Okay. So this is what we call a piecewise function. So it's just a whole bunch of functions just put together and they're defined at different intervals. So notice here what this means is that uh, for the first type of function, three, I can only plug in values that are x that are less than three. Okay. 
you will use the second function only if the x values are between 3 and 7. And for this guy, you're only going to plug in values that are greater than 7 or equal to 7. Okay? So, let me give you an example. Find the following. So, find f of 0, first of all. So, think about 0 in this case. So, 0 is where? So, you got to look at this guy right here. You got to look at all of these restrictions. So zero, you can see that it's less than three. So this is the number that we're going to plug in. So you can see that there's really nothing that I can plug in there. So the answer is just going to be three. What do you think f of negative one is going to be? Well, negative one corresponds with this first one again. And again, you can't plug in negative one at all. So it's just going to be three again. What about f of 10? Well, 10 is not less than 3, it's not between 3 or 7, it's greater than 7. So we're going to use this last function, this last piece. We're going to plug in the 10 in there, so we're going to have 10 squared minus 4, and you're going to get 100 minus 4, that's going to give me 96. And then let's choose to this last one, what is f of 4? So f of 4 is going to be a number between 3 and 7. So we're going to use the middle one. 4 times 4 minus 7. That's going to give me 16 minus 7, which gives me 9. Okay. Let's just do one more. Let's say I wanted to know what f of 3 was. Okay, so that's a little tricky because you see the 3 is in two different categories. So you see it here, and you also see it here. But what you got to look at is the inequality. So which one is it including the 3? So this guy is the one that's including the 3 because there's an equal sign right there. So we're going to use the second one. So 4 times 3 minus 7 is going to give me 12 minus 7, which is going to give me 5. Okay? All right. So that's basically uh, the whole point about looking at the, at the functions algebraically. Um, and in the next video, we're going to continue on with functions.